Hey everyone, uh, the purpose of this video is to go over the auto-tune variation tuning method to determine the PID controller settings for a heat exchanger in the controller or in the control station Loop Pro training software. Okay, but first I'm going to start by going over some information on the ATV tuning method. And I'm going to do that using some PowerPoint slides that are based on Chapter 9 in the Riggs textbook on chemical and bioprocess control. Okay, so for the ATV test, the way it works is you apply, or it's an open loop method, so the controller will be turned off, and we apply a change in the controller output, or we could do a change in the valve position as well. But generally, we do a change in the controller output. We step it up and below, up and down around the um, value where it's set, and we establish a standing oscillation, and then we use the attributes from the standing oscillation to calculate the... PI and possibly D terms for the controller. Okay, so this plot right here shows what's going on. Um, so we start from the initial value of the controller output, and we can do a step, either a step up or step down by a certain value, and we'll call that value H. So this could be maybe 2% or a few percent of the controller setting. So if the controller is at 40%, we might step down to 41, then step back up to 43. Okay, so we step down. Um, wait for the system to respond. So we can see as we step down, the, it takes a minute for the system to actually respond, shown here. And then as soon as the system starts responding, we step up. Okay, and so because the system takes a while to respond, um, it doesn't change right away. So it'll start going back to the steady state. And as soon as it crosses the steady state, we can switch the controller back in the opposite direction. Okay, and so we do this for a few cycles until we have a standing oscillation shown here. So when we have a standing oscillation, we can then use the values of the oscillation. Okay, so we have our H value, which is the change in the controller output. We have the value shown here, A, which is the amplitude of the oscillation. And then we have this value, PU, which is the period of oscillation that was established. Um, I also want to note that the ATV method is ideal for systems that have slow responses or take a while to respond um, because they can done, be done very quickly. These are also methods that can be done by the auto-tune feature on a controller. Okay, so the way that we use the ATV results is first we calculate the ultimate gain. So KU is going to equal 4H, which is the change in the controller, divided by pi A. A was the amplitude of the oscillations. Okay, and then based on this, we can determine, we can calculate the value of the gain and the tau I um, using these terms. And the period of oscillation, which is shown on the previous slide, um, and KU, which is calculated here. There's two different types of settings or more that can be used with this. Uh, generally, we have what's called ZN settings. This is Ziegler and Nicole's. And these settings are typically applied for systems where you want a little bit more of an aggressive controller tuning. So maybe a, a quarter amplitude to a fifth amplitude decay controller settings. Uh, we can also use the TL, which is Tereus Lubin settings. And these are typically used for a more conservatively tuned controller where you don't want the system to respond as fast because potentially it's maybe it's a nonlinear system or you expect large disturbances that can affect the process. So um, we establish the standing oscillations by changing the controller up and down. We get PU, we get the period of ultimate period. We can calculate the ultimate gain and use those to calculate the um, gain and the tau for the system. Okay, so the advantage of the ATV method is shown here. So in the, in the case where we have a slow responding process where it takes you know maybe hours to respond, if we just apply a change in the control output, maybe for a, a composition type system, you can see by this plot it might take it might take many hours for the system to reach a new steady state value. By doing the ATV method, we can see that we can establish establish the standing oscillation fairly quickly, and also you notice that the disruption to the process is very small. So overall, we're not going to change our process very much from the steady state conditions. And we're going, to able, we're going to be able to tune the controller much faster than a typical um, open loop process. All right, now let's go and do this in practice using the control station software. All right, we'll do this using the heat exchanger. So I'm going to start by uh, resetting the process to system defaults. Okay, so remember now it's an open loop method. So here I can open the controller, and I want to make sure the controller is in manual mode, uh, no PID control. Okay, so what we're going to do now I just, I'm going to leave this open for a second so that the system doesn't run. Okay, so what we do now is um, change this controller up and down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because it's at 39%, I'm going to step down to 38, and then I'm going to step up to 40. So I'm going plus or minus 1 around the controller output. 
All right, so we'll start by decreasing this to 38. Um, maybe also what I want to do is I'm going to change the clock function to have this run a little bit slower to give me time to respond to the changes. So I'm going to put this on slow to medium setting. Okay, so step down to 38 and go. Once I see the system start to respond, okay, so it's changing beyond outside the noise. I can see it start to change. Now I'm going to go ahead and step it up to... I started at 39, I stepped down to 38, now I'm going to step up to 40. Okay, so now I'm going to let this respond, and as soon as I see this value come back and cross the steady or cross the initial steady state value, I'm going to go and step in the opposite direction. So now I'm going to go step back to 38, let the system change. Okay, now it's gotten to the steady state value, so I'm going to go back up to 40, let the system respond, it's coming back down. All right, and you kind of have to time it. Shoot, I missed it on that one. We have to time it, um, or we can change the speed to make it easier. So the nice thing about the simulation is you can actually change the speed. If you're going to do this in practice, you need to be a little bit more careful, or it's going to just take you more cycles to establish the standing oscillations. Okay, there it is. And again, you know, we don't necessarily, not trying to be exactly perfect, but I want to get it pretty close. I can always change the settings if I need, and... And my standing oscillations don't look that great, but I'm kind of getting somewhere where at least... Let's keep this going a couple more times. Again, I have the benefit of actually pausing the system. There it is. We'll do one more. And then... Okay, so now I can see that I at least have a couple three cycles here where I have a nice standing oscillation. Okay, so now based on these values right here, I can get my um, my period of oscillation shown here. I have my step. I did 1% change in the controller output. I can print out my output file and I can actually calculate what's the amplitude um, of the oscillation and then use this to calculate the um, the controller gain in the reset time as shown on the previous slides. Um, so now I should say if you want to use the derivative term, the initial, we can start with these settings right here, and the initial guess on the derivative term would be about one-eighth of the period of oscillation, so that'll give you a start for the derivative time. And then again, if you, as you want to look at um, using the derivative term to increase the rate of response, you can continue to tune the controller by increasing the gain on the derivative term by the same percentage. So once you start from the one eighth of the period of oscillation for the derivative term, you can go ahead and change your controller settings. So increase the gain by about 10%, increase the derivative by about 10%, and see how that affects the controller response, and make changes until you're, you're happy with the response. I just want to note, because we're talking about the derivative term, one of the things that will be important to look at is how much your controller is changing. It's really important that you don't have your controller changing too rapidly or swinging wide open and entirely closed because that will both um, degrade the, your performance and also degrade the hardware that's operating on your system. Okay, so we'll stop there um, and good luck with con or tuning your controller using the ATV method.